So everybody, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Jason Testart. Uh, this is my first time at this conference. And um, last night, somebody asked me, uh, what's your contribution to BSD? And I told him, uh, I run a Mac. And then he started using smaller words and spoke slower. Um, I'm kidding. He didn't. But um, so, so far, my contribution to OpenBSD has been a submission of a man page fix to pf.conf back in version three or something. Um, a little bit about me I've been in IT for 20 years, I've been in higher ed. I work at the University of Waterloo right now as sort of a CISO. Um, I'm not supposed to be doing technical stuff, but I can't get away from it. Uh, I'm also a volunteer, so that's why I don't do a lot of hacking and programming. That's me in the corner. Anybody familiar with Police Academy movies? There are many, 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 many reasons why I like driving that thing. Just <laughs> kidding. Um, so volunteer policing is sort of like a reservist with the Army. Um, I'm not actually a police officer. Uh, I help out with the, uh, you know, in the community. Um, I'm also, I've got two kids who are teenagers, and I, uh, uh, I've, I've been known to create dad jokes both at home and at work. Um, so speaking of dad jokes, is anybody not familiar with this F-Sync issue? Something going on about F-Sync. There was like a battle between uh, uh, Postgres developers and kernel developers about how F-Sync handles um, problems with the I.O. Um, uh, my my SOC team leader um, pointed this out to me recently because uh, we like running Postgres. Uh, he's a free BSD uh, free fanatic. I almost said free. Um, and uh, and so you saw it, you know, and, and basically what this issue is is, uh, uh, and I'll probably get it wrong because I'm not a developer. Um, so Postgres developers were assuming that problems with I/O would get marked in memory that. You know, you wouldn't get data corruption issues, and the kernel guys were like, "No, we just reset a flag, and everything's fine." And um, and uh, Postgres developers were like, "But this is insane! What are you doing? The kernel's got brain damage and all this stuff." And one of the things it was basically an issue with assumptions, right? And the um, the assumptions were that uh, you know Linux people are thinking if we have all these, we mark all these uh, pages in memory as dirty. Um, then, you know, when people keep pulling out USB sticks, you're going to end up with, uh, you're going to end up with, you're running out of memory, right? Because you keep keeping track of all this bad memory. Um, and uh, so this issue affects uh, everything, kind of everything but FreeBSD. And of course, I guess this is why my SOC team later pointed this out, because he's a FreeBSD guy. And uh, so I made a joke. I said, "Look, okay, why don't why don't Postgres developers just assume that their storage, that all of their storage, is on USB sticks?" Of course, it's not really practical, right? And then he goes, "Or they could just run FreeBSD." And then I told them, "But that solution's not portable." Okay. I was going to add a slide about my daughter. I got this book on BSD. And she was uh, the O'Reilly book, not BSD, uh, BGP. Ugh. And uh, she was going to say something about, oh, what's that book you've got about uh, PGB or something? And I'm like, no, it's it's BGP. It's a it's a routing thing. She goes, O'Reilly, terrible, but I'm proud of her. <laughs> so uh, this is really about CTF, not about dad jokes or free BSD or anything like that. Um, so. Every once in a while I get this bug, I want to do some pen testing. I mean, uh, I've got a security background, right? Um, and uh, I used to do HoneyNet project like a long, long time ago. Does everybody remember that? The HoneyNet challenges, scan of the month, all that stuff. Probably ages me. Um, so SANS has these, uh, and uh, Counter Hack, I think it is. Uh, they run these things. They're pretty fun. Um, they're very... Uh, they're very popular. Um, so I, I started with the gnome in your home kind of like a week before it was done. I never got it finished because the last challenge was like 
C program. Like I don't do that anymore. Um, and then there was, uh, you know, and then there was some other stuff, which was it was really fun to do. And then after the wintered one, I I, I feel like I felt like I needed more. Uh, so in 2018, I found this hack the box platform uh, based in Europe, and they do all this, uh, you know, all these machines to hack. Oh, that sounds like fun. So I did about a dozen during that time period. Uh, had some fun. Uh, learned what what I knew, what I didn't know. Um, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of background about Hack the Box. Is there anybody, everybody, from, who's not familiar with Hack the Box? Okay, so we've got some people who aren't familiar. So, so really, what it is, it's uh, it's like a, it's it's a bunch of VMs. There's about um, there's about twenty that are live at any one time, but there's actually way more. Is this too loud? Yeah, sorry. I have a loud voice. Um, I knew that would happen. I should have warned you. Um, uh, you need to hack the invite code to create an account. Um, if you understand anything about how web applications work, you'll probably get through that pretty easily. Uh, 20, uh, what I noticed though, participating in this, um, it's mostly Linux and Windows. There's not a lot of ESD there. Um, all the boxes are submitted by community members. Um, there are moderators there, which, which uh, you know, which approve or decline them. I don't know what uh, what criteria they use, um, but basically, there's there's two flags: can you get a user to begin with, and then can you escalate that to root? Um, there's other um, challenges in there that I won't talk about. Um, so I thought, after doing a few of these, I thought there was a couple observations I made. Um, one of which was, I didn't see anything involving LDAP, and a lot of what I do, I work at a university, and, and identity management's under my um, portfolio, so, I mean, LDAP is, is around. I'm like, well, LDAP's a real use case. I mean, we're, there's not a lot of environments, enterprise environments, that don't have LDAP somewhere. Um, I didn't see it anywhere in, 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 the, uh, in the challenges. The other thing I don't see a lot um, is uh, those of you who know about Windows hacking, past, past the hash is like, everybody knows about past the hash. Um, it's, it's a weakness in, in the uh, land manager and NTL protocol. And um, we use it in the Windows environment, but we don't really use it a lot with Samba. Um, it's a technique I've used uh, with, uh, you know those home NASs that people buy at Future Shop and Best Buy and all that, and they plug them into your network. Uh, I have researchers that do that. Um, you know, I regularly scan my network, and every once in a while, my scanner says that it can find, you know, some sort of traversal issue. Dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash etc password. And I'm like, okay. So then I, you know, I <coughs> I look at that. And I'm like, okay, let's see if I can prove my induction. Can I use the same path with etc shadow? And if I can, <laughs> well. I don't know, I probably don't need to finish the story. Um, in that case, I mean, I don't need to crack the stuff in ETC Shadow, but what I can do is, uh, it basically means you have root, it basically means you could probably look at anything on the file system. Usually I reverse back, and since this is a NAS, I can find Samba, I can find where the hashes are, and then I use pass the hash to get the data. Don't need root on this device to get it, I just, Pass the hash to get it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, that would be a neat thing to, to try. Um, and then uh, OpenSSH, there's a couple of features of OpenSSH that I I found a lot of people just don't understand or don't even know they're there. And that's the uh, the authorized keys command and the authorized principles command, which is kind of interesting because I think there was a talk last year at this conference about that. It's interesting timing. Um, so I thought about, okay, the whole idea of contributing something to Hack the Box is, is for people to learn. So I thought, okay, I'll set out with, with three learning objectives. One, uh, how to enumerate an, an LDAP directory, because I didn't see it anywhere in there. Understand how to use pass the hash technique with Samba, and um, understanding how SSH certificate authority so the, 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 those were the three objectives I had in mind. Now, mind you, 
the, with these three objectives, really, it's 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 OS agnostic. Well, Unix. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe I'll build this with OpenBSD. This is about OpenBSD advocacy. So why? Um, well, first of all, uh, I I like minimization. I mean, yes, I could probably use a Linux distro that that's uh, that's a minimal Linux. Why would I do that? Everybody around here would understand because BSD is bad. Um, so I, you know, for that reason, I like kind of a, a minimalist, good security reputation. The one thing I particularly like about OpenBSD is the documentation. Um, I don't, I don't know if we give enough credit to documentation, um, but I always found it uh, of excellent quality. Um, and that's why I kind of lean on that for certain things, just because it's, I know it's going to be there. I don't have to put any guesswork. Um, the other thing is it's different. And this is actually something I discovered when I was looking at OpenBSD again, because I hadn't looked at it in a while. Um, it, you know, for example, Duas versus uh, sudo. Um, and it's been running my home firewall for years and years and years and years. So now I have a couple of new uh, learning objectives. Um, if I'm in an environment where most people are using or Linux and maybe Windows, maybe BSD can throw them off a bit. So really it's it's really to enforce system enumeration. And why not why not put some features of OpenBSD in there as well? And it'll get people reading manuals and reading or reading man pages or reading documentation. So so I set out with uh, this at the time, uh, OpenBSD 6.3 was, was the latest. Um, and this is probably just the steps here, basically what anybody should be doing when they're developing something new or, or deploying technology. Um, <coughs> part of it's for me, learning, does this work the way I think it works? And does the documentation exist that gives the participant uh, a chance in succeeding? Um, because I'm, the whole idea is to make it real world and uh, achieving learning objectives. So uh, keeping it simple, taking notes, and uh, an educated guess about resource requirements because there's gonna be lots and lots of people hammering at these, at these virtual machines. Um, the other thing, I, what I didn't mention, is they get reset a lot because people don't know what they're doing. They think the box is broken, so they make it reset so it goes back to its initial state. Um, so what have I learned? Uh, so, <laughs> and this goes back to, I guess, just me having, haven't been doing systems administration for a little while. I was like, Active Directory, you can, you can deploy Samba server as an Active Directory, that's amazing. Um, I didn't know you could do that because when I was playing with Samba, you couldn't. Um, there's PAM support, again, I didn't know that. Um, the way I used to do pass the hash with Samba is I had to fetch this patch from foofoos.net, uh, take version Samba 2. Point something, patch the code, rebuild it, and I had my own little way of using Samba with other hashes. But now, there's this parameter of command line, pwnt hash, that's, that's really handy. So there's something I learned, and I'm hoping others can learn this too. Um, the other interesting thing is that I figured I'd, I'd kind of think of this as like a bucket list. So I visited Vegas. In Vegas, I've shot a gun. Okay, I'm a Canadian, that's, that's a novel thing. Um, Anybody who knows much about cryptography would know about Ian Goldberg. He's now a professor at the University of Waterloo. I used to support him in teaching, and he was like he he was he was um, he was like the poster boy for uh, for Linux in in, the, in in my area. He was the guy who was always distributing uh, PPOE drivers on Linux back when all we had was Slackware. Like this is. Um, <clears throat> I mean, in, in, a, in a support environment, I, he asked a question, and I asked him, did you read the man page? He said, no. And that's like, bucket list. Um, uh, 
I got to throw wooden sticks at riot police, um, but that was in a training scenario. Um, as a as, if I was, as a volunteer, you get to do stuff like that. It was, somehow it felt good. I don't know why. Um, I've given an algebra lesson to a grade seven math class. I do have a math degree, and and and, and probably one of the biggest things that I never got to do in my career was play with NIST or, or Yellow Page Surface. It's <laughs> funny, BSD. On OpenBSD, that's that's the way you do LDAP integration, it turns out, is, is through, uh, if you went to the last talk on uh, building uh, uh, OpenBSD workstations in a, in a, in a lab environment, uh, he was explaining how YP LDAP is, is the glue to put that together. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to read these slides, but uh, these are kind of the requirements uh, for publishing uh, a box to, uh, to the Hack the Box service. Um, and, uh, and then there's more rules. I guess they found that a lot of submissions weren't, uh, were, weren't acceptable. So they posted to the forum, you go to forum, uh, the Hack the Box forum, which is publicly available. You'll see a couple of more uh, rules. Uh, <coughs> probably the amusing thing is um, no heavy brute forcing, fuzzing, or directory traversal. I think a lot of people, the first thing, the first thing they would get when they get a hash is they try to brute force it. Um, probably don't need to. There's probably another way to use that hash. Um, I guess people were putting them in without write-ups on how to solve it. Well, that, um, yeah, and a hint where I've seen some pretty lame ones where uh, the user flag isn't where you think it should be, it's in some weird place. That's not the point. Um, so I developed this thing in July, in the summer of 2018. I submitted it in early August. It didn't get released until mid September, so there's quite a lag between the time you submit something for Hack the Box and the time that it actually gets released. And there's a couple of reasons for that. There's other submissions ahead of you that have been accepted that, and they release one every week. They have to actually review it, make sure that it's doable uh, and that somebody can do it, even following the instructions. Um, I can't really talk about the box until it's uh, retired. Um, so just stay quiet. Uh, and watch. So it was retired. This my first one was retired in mid February. I've since submitted another one, uh, and that one's still still live. Um, being a Mac user, I use v uh, Fusion VM. I try to make this really minimal. Uh, one gig of RAM should be enough. Four gig of disk is enough for a base open BSD install. Uh, basic services, uh, HTTPD. Uh, really, the reason for that is, is and I'll explain it a little later. Uh, it's kind of twofold. Uh, LDAP, obviously, because we're talking about LDAP. SMB, obviously, because we're talking about Sambo. Um, I'm using Postgres on the back end and Python Flask. Uh, don't judge uh, for my technology choices. Uh, I don't do a lot of programming, so Python's a nice, I like it as a scripting language. Uh, Flask is a nice little framework to make it, you know, webify it. And I, f I found a I found a good tutorial on UWSGI. And, uh, it works pretty well. So here's they did some artwork for Y Puppy. Um, they made pillows with a Y. Uh, really, the name, the reason why I called this machine Y Puppy, this first one, it's Puffy. We all know what Puffy means and YP, Yellow Pages. Um, but I guess these are Linux people and they're thinking pillows. I don't know. Um, so most most pen testers, the first thing they do is they want to go to the web. I guess that's that's a common service. Um, when when I was reading the man page for for the native uh, web server on OpenBSD, I was. Uh, I, I saw this. I saw this block drop uh, feature, and I'm like, "Oh, well, that'll be fun." So when somebody, uh, the first thing they'll do is they'll try to fuzz the URLs, and, and it was funny watching the forum. 
because uh, they would they would post. Uh, I think something's wrong with this web server. My scanning tools are breaking because they're because they're. <laughs> With every access, they get a TCP reset. <laughs> oh, I still laugh at that. Uh, um, now, the first flag, uh, really, I want them to find the LDAP port and uh, enumerate that and figure out what's there. Um, and I didn't, I didn't make it too hard, I don't think. Um, so, so really the idea is, uh, this took me a little while to figure out because I was trying to hack it together. It's just this really simple, um, just two accounts, Alice and Bob. Um, does everybody know where Alice and Bob comes from? Because people started wondering if my name was Alice. <laughs> 1978, Alice and Bob. Okay, nobody knows about crypto. All right, um, it hacked the box anyway. Um, it's basically just it's just some user accounts, but I've extend, extended the schema to support a Samba account. Um, and uh, I know I was like, well, I'm thinking Windows, I'm thinking Samba, so I'm thinking, why not get a Putty in there? Um, and uh, well, you can read the slides. So the whole idea is to get Alice is is I guess where the, the first flag is. So. This is what the um, this is what Alice's uh, LDAP entry looks like. Um, I think the first thing is people go for this user password. They uh, they they decode that and it just it's BSD off. Like that's just open BSD. Um, hopefully, people will notice the uh, the Samba NT password uh, hash. Note that it's an Intelium hash and then do something with that. Now it's interesting in the in the in the so when they get that I should go back so I get that hash they give it to um, they give it to, to their Samba client using that option and they they connect to Samba and when they connect through Samba there, there's a single share and they look in the share and there's a single file it's a, PP, a PPK file um, so in my in my uh, in my formal, you know, official solution, I'm like, you open Putty on a Windows machine, and you, you know, you extract the keys, and then a lot of the uh, the uh, participants, um, there's this Putty Gen command I didn't even know, so I learned something. Um, so I'm kind of ashamed of this because I'm supposed to be kind of a like a Unix BSD guy, and here I am using Windows tools. Because I got the title director, or whatever. <laughs> I guess I'm just it's eating away at my brain. Um, so once they're on the box with this Alice user, they get the uh, the SSH uh, deconfig. Hopefully, they've noticed that they got in with a key, but there's no .ssh directory. Hopefully, they'll go, "Hey, what's going on? How did I get in?" Um, this is because of the authorized keys command. Um, which is basically calling Perl to a web service and you give it some parameters. So hopefully they see this and then they run similar commands. Um, the other hint is in the Bob, uh, I think Bob, I made Bob's uh, home directory world readable. Um, and there's a, there's a little database schema file there where, which this is the Postgres schema behind the uh, the little database for the little app that I use to serve out keys. Um, another little thing that I'm using to frustrate the escalation step, if the if the uh, sending TCP resets wasn't enough, uh, is um, so people will run uh, they'll run this curl command uh, against this SSH off service endpoint. Uh, to get things, they'll get them from their own machine, um, and they'll look for principles because it's there's some key stuff here as well. And what they'll do is they, uh, I have this little piece of code in here which looks at the address that you're coming from, and you'll see in the schema for principles. I look there's the client, that's a sitter. I love Postgres. I love that data type. Oh. Um, because this is what I do. Um, so 
So the principle here that they need to know is this emergency backdoor and leet, leet speak typing whatever. Um, but I, I made it so that you only get that if you're fetching the URL from localhost. So people are like accessing it from their own like Cali or whatever, and they're like, what's going on? I don't understand. That, that, was, kind of, that was kind of fun too. Um, the internal address space of uh, Hack the Box is all 10 addresses. Um, so th this is why it was, it was beautiful to use the, the, the classless interdomain routing type so I can just give it the slack, not have to worry about it, but um, eh, that probably uh, threw off some people for a little while. Um, so then getting the second flag was basically generating, uh, they had to generate a key pair and sign it. Um, so with no sudo, they had to figure out if they, if they were good at enumerating, they would see this user CA um, user for the home directory and all it has is a, a CA, well, a key pair, it's an SSH key pair effectively um, with the permissions. So uh, if they enumerate properly, they'll find this doas.conf file, which basically allows Alice with no password to run um, SSH keygen. And SSH keygen can be used to sign keys. Um, yeah. So remember at the beginning when I said I like open, OpenBSD for a minimal install, right? So I install OpenBSD and it says, are you running X? Do you want the X packages? I said, oh, whatever, I'll hit enter. What's gonna happen? This happened. I didn't, do, I didn't type minus X star uh, to remove the X11, because usually I'm a minimalist that way. Uh, so then that kind of that kind of threw a wrinkle in this challenge and suddenly it became a, a download some exploit code and run it and get root. Now CV, it's a CVE uh, uh, exercise, which kind of disappointed me. But what can I do? I mean, what are the chances of getting a, a, a CVE uh, you know, found and patched in the middle of this? And the thing is, when I publish these things, I don't have control of the box anymore, right? So I sent an email to the guys. I'm like, can, can you remove the CUID bit from the X? Just, just do that. That's fine. Like, like, no, we're not going to change it. Um, so this is the feedback. Uh, this they've introduced these graphs um, to show you kind of what the box is like, and this is exactly what I was going for, um, except for the CVE part. Like, I, I didn't want that, um, but I wanted the real life and the enumeration to be high. That was that was my goal. So. Goal achieve, uh, just ignore the CVE part. Um, I got some good feedback. Uh, I think people liked, liked the challenge, probably because it was different. Um, they learned some stuff and it was, it's not too contrived. It, there, there was a lot of real world elements in there, right? I mean, we see LDAP all over the place. We see Samba's used. We see NTLM hashes are all over the place. Um, and, uh, and I got to frustrate some people who were doing uh, HTTP scanning. Um, I love that. I still can't, I'll be laughing at that when I'm in, like, when I'm sitting there. Um, small things, I guess. Uh, so uh, just a summary of what I learned. Um, Sam has changed a lot uh, since 3.22. What are we at now? Fine. What version of Sam are we running? It's current? Nobody knows. You just you just Unix. You don't care. Okay. Um, unit testing is critical with anything. Uh, doing a complete run through is really important. As much as 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 much of a pain as it was for me to go through this thing after building it, just like stepping away and then coming back and pretending I've never seen the box and then documenting what I was doing. Um, Check your spelling uh, when setting up YP. So the domain, the, the YP domain name is kind of important because that's really the way things kind of talk to each other. When you spell that wrong, nothing works. I spent like a whole morning going, is my understanding of YP fundamentally flawed? 
Is my understanding of LDAP on OpenBSD fundamentally flawed? No, I can't spell. Um, but I mean, we've all had those issues. And oh yeah, complacency. I mean, yes, OpenBSD has good uh, good reputation, but it's it's not immune um, to new exploits. I remember when OpenBSD used to say, "Never been, never had a remote exploit." <laughs> I like the the wording's changed. Um, so it was released. Uh, so when it retired, people now could do write-ups and publish write-ups on the net and then say, hey, come and look at my write-up. <laughs> so I, I uh, so of course I had to look at these write-ups because I'm really curious to see what people thought of it and how they solved it. Um, so one of the things that was um, confirmed for me was that many people don't know about these SSH features. The, uh, the authorized key command and the, and the, and the use of principles, like the, this whole quasi PKI thing. Um, the other thing is, I guess, I guess the idea of the password database is, is kind of mysterious to people. Um, I think I, there was a couple I read and they were like, I can't find Alice and Bob in slash etc password. Well, because they're not, they're in an LDAP directory. And so this idea of get it. Um, which, which I think is pretty universal on Unixes. Um, that's how you get your database because your database could be it does it's not always in the password file. Uh, it could be in a YP database, could be in an LDAP. Um, and the understanding between an account database and an authentication, um, I think a lot of people struggle with that. So, for example. I'm going to use Linux as an example. Don't throw things at me. The idea between the you know the the name service switch <coughs> and PAM, right? Where you know and on and on BSD it's it's something different. Um, and I, I think a lot of people don't don't get that distinction. And it could be just because they haven't worked with it enough and they're learning. Um, I think public key crypto is mysterious for most people. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm not quite sure about that one yet. I guess it depends on your level and experience. And and I mean the and the the other thing is the uh, the one thing I'll give a lot of these people who who submitted uh, solutions really presented them in, in really wonderful ways because I'm not the type of I'm not a web I don't like I'm not the type of person who's really good at presenting information on the web. I use. I use Word for my solution. Um, that's just the tool I use. I'm a, I'm a director, right? I, I'm a manager guy. I, can, I just use spreadsheets and stuff. So, um, or wikis. I use wikis. Um, so yeah, it was that was really great to see. Um, if you're interested, here's a list of the write-ups that I like. Il y a même un français. Pour vous qui parlez français, c'est OK. Um, the next challenge I wrote is called Fortune. Um, here's another thing about Hack the Box. It's really hard. People are looking for what level of challenge it is. And I find that very difficult to do. And the reason I find it difficult to do is I think the, the range of skills of the participants is really variable. There's a lot of people who are new and they don't understand, they're just learning. And there's a lot of people who are just, they, this, is, this is what they do. This is, they live, eat, breathe this stuff. So given, given how hard things were, some people found the, the first one, why Puffy, and I rated that a medium, which I, the moderators were thinking it should be hard. I'm like, really? I think it should be a medium. <laughs> Um, and I think I ended up being correct, but I'm like, nevertheless, let's make this insane. Uh, I've been getting a lot of feedback that, it, no, it's not really, this next one's not really insane. It's maybe it's hard, but it's not insane. Um, so the next, I can't talk too much about the, the, the public, the, uh, the challenge, but um, it involves fortune, which is 
included in a certain package open to Steam? Yeah. Games dot GG's out or whatever. Um more public key crypto. Um more Postgres and related things, which is actually part of the challenge. And uh, more open BSD features that I don't, well, or BSD that I don't see really anywhere else. Like, you don't see these things on Linux. Um, so far, uh, there's been a lot of good uh, feedback from that one. Um, I kind of monitor the forum to see where people are um, and how they're doing. Um, and as you can see in that graph to the right, it's uh, people overall are, I think they're finding it difficult, not too easy, um, which is kind of what I was expecting based on my kind of how I was assessing people were doing uh, with, uh, with some of these concepts. So, and that's all I have. So thank you for coming. <laughs>